Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing an MPFL update video and previously I thought I would space out the notes that I had taken over every month like from pre-surgery leading to like currently what's happening now. As of now I am at six months post-op. Previously I did take videos immediately after surgery and a little bit like over the couple months like post-op but to be honest the reason why i ended up deleting them and they're completely gone is because i was those first like four to six weeks i was just doing a lot of crying and a lot of regret like i couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel so i realize now that since i've had time to reflect and like add my notes as the months continue that's a better way for me to talk about like what's happened in the surgery I do realize that that is going to take quite a long time to get through everything. So I think I'm just going to do like a very quick from two months to now. Sorry if I sound stuffy. I'm not sick. It's just sinuses, allergies. So I'll put links in the description below and some cards up above where you can go to my MPFL reconstruction surgery video about what you might need and what the like pre-surgery and my prehab leading up to the first month post-op was like. So five weeks post-op, I ditched one crutch and I felt good enough to walk around and do some chores. This is something that looking back, I think really helped um, things like vacuuming, just something to like help you keep balance and walk at the same time. But at five weeks post-op, I got rid of one crutch and I was just using one of the other crutches to help myself walk. Something that helped quite a bit during this time of recovery leading up to about the six week mark was that we were ordering meal prep. Typically meal prep is something we do together. Um, I've spoken about it before on my channel and, and I do have a few like videos up on some recipes that we do use, but there are some meal prep companies near us that specifically do like gluten-free, dairy-free, and they're very like sensitive to the things that I'm allergic to. So that really helped. So I think I mentioned before that I started physical therapy at six weeks post-op because I think what happened is I saw my surgeon, he approved me for physical therapy. Um, I still had to be in my big brace, but then he, like he said, oh, you can go to physical therapy, but they were booked for a couple weeks. I do have a note here that the physical therapists were very different from the surgeon and the physician or surgeon's assistant. Um, I just, I, I think surgeons are just going to be more rough. I think that's how they are. Maybe it's in their line of work because they're so familiar with what they do. Um, whereas physical therapists and like physios, I think they are more gentle. We started out with very basic exercises because there was a point at this time where I still was not allowed to bend my leg while walking. So I was locked straight while walking up, like up to this probably leading up to two months. So there was a lot of balancing exercises we did. Um, there were certain things that we started to do where, for example, they had a cone and I was standing in one place and they unlocked my brace. It, so I could like bend it as long as I wasn't bending it and putting pressure on it. And I would try to like step over the cone, just step in place like with my, I don't know if this will work, like, like that, <laughs> um, with my injured or operated leg. Month two, there was a new exercise every week in physical therapy, which I really, really liked um, because, you know, my husband and I, we, prior to COVID, we were always at the gym. I would go to gym on lunch. Like I just, you know, strength training is something that is so dear to my heart. And this really helped me feel more normal and it really kind of helped get rid of any feelings of depression or anxiety that I had. Being able to get on the bicycle and you know, you need a 90 degree bend in order to do a full rotation on a bicycle. That might involve you like pushing your hips a bit back, but in order to get that full rotation, you need a 90 degree bend. And the, when I was able to do that, it just felt so good, like such a release of emotions. You know, we were doing things like leg lifts and leg extensions and hamstring curls and again just more balancing exercises so in my second month of post-op i did still need extra pillows and elevation for supporting my knee especially when i was sleeping i think i mentioned this before because you're going to have a lot of muscle spasms uh, and whenever you relax it might you know you might like bend in a way that your muscles aren't used to yet i had to pretty much encase my leg in like pillows or towels um, or like fluffy blankets in order for me to like keep my leg more straight and I'm a side sleeper So I think it was around I, I might get to it But I think around month four or five is when I felt comfortable enough to like bend my leg and sleep on my side And just have like a fluffy blanket in between so two and a half months post-op I got out of my big brace I was so so happy to do this because leading up to this point it was like okay you have to stay with your leg locked straight okay now you can 
unlock while walking but like it's just the big brace like it's interesting how what once was like a crutch and a safety item that you were like oh my god i can't be without this like whenever i was at physical therapy and they would be like okay let's take this big brace off you i'd be like oh my god no <laughs> like i need that but it's amazing what once becomes like a crutch and something that you use as a safety tool eventually you're like like i don't need this anymore it's such a good feeling and actually today is the first time six months post-op that I've been able to take a shower completely without sitting down at all and that includes shaving like got in showered shaved and got out of the shower didn't need to put my compression sleeve back on didn't use my chair at all the chair was completely removed from the shower and I'm just so happy I know that a lot of people tend to do it sooner like I said I think I'm, my recovery is going a lot slower but hey, that's okay. Like, I'm just happy that it's happening. So got out of my big brace. Um, I noted that it was very scary and I was struggling to straighten while walk. So that is something that will cause a limp if you are not able to straighten your leg and walk. So I was able to have my leg completely straight. Like I had a good uh, ability to straighten my leg when I was like sitting or when I had my leg just like sitting out in front of me. Or, you know, I, a lot of the times what I did is I would have like a computer chair in front of me and I would have my, my operated leg just hanging there so that my knee, you know, it had a, it was able to get that stretch. My hamstring wasn't tight. Some of the things that the physical therapist will do is make sure that your hamstring's not tight and your quad, well, my quad was extremely tight. That was something where they taught me some stretches to do and I didn't realize as soon as the physical therapist started like pushing on my quad, I like felt it through my whole body. She's like, this is really, really tight. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, just making sure your hamstring is stretched out as well will help. But um, I think I might show my walk <laughs> now. Um, I'm gonna go through some videos that I took at the end and compare it to now. I'm, I'm working on it. I think for now it's the swaying because I'm leaning towards my unoperated leg. Uh, and, and so that's obviously like my balance and my brain so I'm trying to do a lot of balancing like brushing my teeth just standing on my operated leg like just you know doing the dishes standing on holding my operated leg so and then obviously quad strength so at three months post-op I noted finally feel normal noticing pain and fatigue is my guide 95% where the physical therapist wants me to be I have a tight hip flexor and groin they seem very reactive though which is frustrating Okay, so I think what I meant by that is like, I feel like when I watch other people's videos on like MPFL reconstruction at their physical therapist's office, it seems like they're doing a lot of, like a lot of things that I wasn't doing at that point. And it's interesting because there's, there's a few main physical therapists and the one that I was assigned to, it seemed like, you know, we would do the same exercises until I was like, hey, I'm really struggling with this and, and then they'd be like okay well let's put you on the leg press machine you know instead of being like hey this is your th this is how long you are in recovery now it's time for you to do the leg press machine you know what i mean just very reactive to what i was saying whereas sometimes that physical therapist was out of the office and so i was under the care of these other couple ones and it's so interesting because they would look at my chart and they'd be like oh you need to be doing all this extra stuff by now and i'm like See, I feel, I felt like I was supposed to be doing new things. So I really appreciated that those other physical therapists were able to step in and like get me on a balance board and get me doing like squats, you know. My scars are keloiding or going hypertrophic. Notice my old self is coming back slowly. So you can kind of see my scars, not really. Um, definitely still like a very big ridge right here. This one's kind of flattening out. I think unless it actually affects my range of motion or like my ability to do any kind of physical activity, then I think the surgeon and physical therapist might just ignore that. So month four, I wrote, keep leaning to the side, which is something that I'm still working on now. Feel okay walking on grass. Cold is bothering me. I'm trusting the process now though. It's interesting weaning off a compression sleeve. A brace goes from feeling comfortable and needed to restricting. I'm learning to trust my body. So month four going into month five is when the weather started changing here and it was the first time that I was like, oh, now I understand why people with joint issues say that they don't like the cold because 
I, so I had my compression sleeve and the physical therapist was like, you know, you can wear it up to like right underneath your patella because if you have it completely over your knee, it'll feel too restricting, but you still need that extra stability since your muscles are really weak. And I, and she said, you know, it helps if it's cold, but I didn't really register that at the time because at the time it wasn't cold yet. And so I started to, you know, have my compression sleeve around my ankle and I would only wear it if I was going outside or in public and then inside the house I would just roll it down and have it on my ankle and not really wear it and then I woke up and it was like so freaking cold like the weather had changed and I was like oh my god like I need my compression sleeve I felt it, it, it added some warmth I think um, but what I do is, you know, I sleep with my heating pad now pretty much every night, like next to me. So in the morning I hit my knee with the heating pad for a little bit. And so that way it can like kind of warm up and I do some stretches in bed. Like I, you know, do some bends. So five months post-op, I am not approved for yoga, which is something I need to ask my physical therapist this month. Like, I think she said the repetitive movements was not something she wanted me to do. So not approved for yoga, but did get approved to do squats. So five months was the first time I was able to do squats. She said you can do five tiny ones a day with absolutely no weight. And then the next time I went, they had a cone that I was able to like squat down and touch the cone. It made me feel really great. My quad strength is really behind, although my range of motion is good. I find myself walking a lot more and I'm transitioning off my compression sleeve completely. I'm getting into the shower by sitting and then standing and then getting out by sitting. So at that point, five months, a month ago, I still had the chair in the shower and I would like get in by sitting down, stand up, shower, and then sit down to get out. So I think that was a good way to transition out of it. Oh, I went to the Arboretum and did more walking than ever before. I needed to use my cane and my compression sleeve and I was not able to go down the steep steps. So now I'm at six months. I really, on my to-do list <laughs> is I need to work on my balance. I need to get my quad stronger. Um, I need to see the physical therapist about like going downstairs with my operated leg. It might be related to my quad strength because what's happening is I'm feeling my patella kind of like clicking or um, like jumping and apparently that is the tra the tracking issue could potentially be due to a weak quad. So we are all caught up now. What I'm going to do is do a screen record on my Instagram. Um, I know that some people don't have Instagram so I'm just going to go through all the MPFL little videos that I have. You can see I have my grabber right next to me and the computer chair. Yep, so wearing the J brace, you will get a lot of like scratches and even the big brace like on your non-operated leg. There's me waking up. So something that I did uh, that really helped me stay kind of motivated and not get too sad was like every day when I would do my stretching, I would record it. My Tia dropped off some nail polish to keep me busy. You can see my cart there with all my medicine. Yeah, my mom got me a bell. <laughs> Uh, so there's the ice machine, the Iceman machine that I had, and um, unfortunately pain hit me like a truck muscle spasm. Yeah, the muscle spasms were what was really bad. Right, so whenever we were able to take the bandages off after two days, um, you know, we would reapply gauze and rewrap with an ace bandage. It would slip a lot, but it felt so good to put the ice on it. Um, here's me complaining. <laughs> I just get frustrated when people are like, oh yeah, like, I don't know. I just hate like performative bullshit. Like, I just want to be able to say like, no, I'm not okay. Like, it's okay that I'm not okay. We don't always have to be like amazing. Um, you can see some lyrics there. So what I did was every time I had like strengthening or I was doing my stretching exercises or I like was doing some comparison videos, I don't know. I made it a thing every day on Instagram to like, post and I would find really inspirational songs um, like Stronger by Britney Spears. You know, like I would find songs that really felt like inspirational to me and I would do these clips. So here's me angry that it's <laughs> my quads asleep. Um, yeah, like that once you are able to get those main bandages off, the, the ice just feels so good. And you have to keep using the ice even if you don't think it's working. Even now, even to this day, like at the end of the day, I need to, I like sit on the couch, like I have it here, my um, <laughs> ice pack. Okay, yeah, stitches were out. 
Um, there's an old picture of me and my husband. Yeah, zero percent, it's hundred percent, zero percent would, I would not recommend the surgery um, unless you absolutely have to. So that's why they were like, oh, do you want to do your other leg in anticipation? And I was like, no, I want to strengthen it as much as possible. So here, yep, apparently this is more common in women due to our, like the curves in it from our hips to our knees to our ankles. These men are usually more like straight, whereas women have more curves. So here we go with my, I was like approved to bend. So this was the passive bending where I was able to put a, a towel or a shirt or like a pillowcase underneath. And I think I thought I was farther along. So right now I'm not even at a zero. I'm not even at like a... There's me bending some more. I think I am at 10 degrees. Yeah, I'm just barely at 10 degrees. There we go, fighter, Christina Aguilera. So the next day, you can see like how hard I'm struggling to bend. Not a big difference. Let's keep going. Quad is still asleep. My quad now is not asleep, but it's definitely not there. So there is a comparison. A centimeter of progress. I will take it. So I am just, just barely past 10 degrees there, aiming for 20. So that was something that helped me was like, okay, the next day or in a couple days, I'm going to be further along. So here we go. 18 days post-op, only allowed passive bending, locked straight, and full weight bearing. So it looks like I'm very close to 20 degrees there. Um, later that night, I, what did I say? I guess I wasn't done for today. Barely past 20 degrees, 20 days post-op, nearly one crutch. So I was like weaning off of my other crutch, full weight bearing, passive bending only. I'm glad I took these notes. <laughs> touched 30 degrees what song do i listen to ship in a bottle so you can see now i am at my house i i transitioned from my parents taking care of me and i ended up at um after like i can't how many weeks did i say <laughs> coming back here i think um something oh there's my scars sorry if you're not into seeing scars but touched 40 degrees and felt it in my toes three weeks post what? three weeks post-op I guess I didn't realize I was, I came back to my house from my parents. I thought I waited like a month. Um, but you know, sometimes you might experience anxiety and that might be because you are in a, in an environment that is not one that you're familiar with. And not that I'm not familiar with, but like, you know, I was at my parents' house versus my house, but you have more control over your own space. Here I am touching 50 degrees bend three weeks and three days. So it took me three weeks and three days to get to 50 degree range of motion. There we go. I am near, you can see I'm not at 90 degrees here. It's not a 90 degree bend nearly, but it was just really nice to be able to sit unlocked. One month post-op closer to 60. All right, here we go. Four and a half weeks post-op. I am at 60 degree bend. Second post-op appointment, five weeks, approved physical therapy, whoa, ahead of schedule. I am at 70 degrees on one crutch now and will aim to be off crutches as soon as possible. Also got the okay to drive once I get myself in and out of the car, unlocked while sitting, but still locked straight otherwise. So, I mean, looking back, I think at the time it felt like, I was like, am I ever gonna be able to bend my leg and walk? <laughs> okay, so here's a comparison. So my right quad, is what you're seeing now and then there's my left see how it dips in like ugh, it's so crazy it's so wild second day being able to do a leg extension remember that hurting really bad <laughs> like it really hurts because your muscles are all like waking up um it's very difficult to do one thing that's really good is to like use your non-operated leg as a guide. So I would sometimes like do a leg extension on my right leg and then like keep looking at my right leg, but then have my left leg do it, if that makes sense. Here we go. Walk like a zombie. So that is walking with my leg locked straight, but trying for no crutches. 
and that's me <laughs> wanting to cross my legs so bad. I think at this point I was getting a bit more brave, like even though my leg was straight, I was like kind of getting on my side a little bit. Something that my surgeon made me very aware of is to not get in the habit of using your other leg to bend or like you need, because a lot of the times you'll like use assistance to bend or like let your leg go, but you need to be able to do it on your own. So I think that's what I was trying to do here. So doing a leg lift, not using, not hooking my other foot underneath it or anything, and then just doing a bend on its own. Then I can cross my legs. <laughs> Three months post-op, my husband has me set up to do, yep, so we ended up getting the bicycle. Um, no excuses, every day, every day on the bicycle. There we go, very close to a full bend. Uh, four months post-op, nearly full range of motion, doing heel slides, need to work on range of motion while not, yeah, so what I've started doing is like lying down and doing the heel slides instead of just sitting. Um, so here I'm showing where I'm still numb. No, I'm still, yeah, I'm still numb there. There we go, approved to do a grand total of five squats a day. All right, full range of motion, but only when I warm up, which is still true now, like to get full, full, like to make it easy, you know, I do have to like warm up my knee. Okay, so I'm gonna try to show you guys my walk. I don't have a compression sleeve on. Here is my operated quad. You can see it like goes in. And here's my non-operated quad. So, but still at six months post-op, I have to tell myself like drive with my knee, bend my leg, heel, toe, you know, straighten when I when I hit with my heel I have to straighten my leg and squeeze with my butt like it's a lot of things to tell yourself over and over again very quickly and then like trying to mimic what the other knee is doing so So I'm also trying to think about like balance and not leaning. I don't know, it's hard. trying to walk tall because sometimes you can have a tendency to lean forward so that's why you need to put your pelvis in like squeeze down your glute and your hamstring to your knee I'm definitely like swaying I feel I feel like I'm swaying Working really hard on my limp though, like really, really hard. All right guys, that's everything I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next MPFL reconstruction update. If you have any questions, let me know down below wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a beautiful day. Bye.